In this video, exception handling in list comprehensions. How to take a list comprehension expression and ensure that you are handling that error. My hair is a little crazy today, but we're gonna get into it. So what I mean by handling an exception in a list comprehension is let's say we had I for I in, um, I don't know, one, two, three, okay? And that'll run just fine. But what if you did something like divide by zero? You're going to get this zero division error. And what we want to learn is how to handle that error. And I'll give you another one as well. So let's say instead of zero, let's just take a variable that we haven't created yet. I'll call this one Z. And we get a different type of error. We're getting a name error. So you can see before we got a zero division error. This time we got a name error. Uh, there's lots of different errors out there, but we need to be able to handle all of them. And this is an interesting question, a common question, right? So people have asked, how do you handle exceptions in the list comprehension? Another question about exception handling. This guy even asked, can we put like a try except block right in the one liner for a list comprehension, which is kind of a good idea, but short story, you can't do that either. So we're going to talk about it in this video, how to handle exceptions in list comprehensions. So you'll notice in this question, you're, they're using the example of eggs and they have this tuple of eggs and they're trying to do a list comprehension over the eggs. And um, in VS Code here, I have a very similar example. I'm going to use an egg example as well. But before we move on to that, let me just show you the answer here, which I think is very helpful. So this answer states that a list comprehension is an expression. It is not a statement. And it goes on to say that only statements can catch, ignore, or handle exceptions. So the bottom line here, what I'm going to be showing you is that there's no way to handle this in one line. There's no way to do a fancy one-liner. So we're gonna have to either create a function that can, uh, an error handling function, or we can use try except blocks. Um, there's a couple things we can do here, but long story short, there's no fancy one-liner that you can do without a function. I'll also just give credit that I did, um, the, the function that we're going to use here, I did pretty much pull it directly from this answer. So we're going to try that out as well. So without further ado, let's move on to VS Code and let's take a look at a couple things. So the first thing I wanna do is just show you without our try except block, um, if we run this, uh, we have assigned our egg list to none and we are printing out none. Next, let's say we wanted to just iterate over our eggs and assign that to our egg list. Well, when we run that, we're going to get our egg list 15052 and you'll notice it's a list instead of a tuple but pretty much the same thing um, that is our egg list and where the problems are going to arise is let's say we started getting into some more complicated syntax so in this case we're going to divide one by the egg and you might see the problem already is one of these eggs is zero and when we try to divide one by zero we're going to get a zero division error. So that's what we're going to try to handle uh, with this try except block. So I'll remove this and I'll uncomment our try except block. And here we're going to just do um, the same thing, one divided by egg, and we're going to print out the exception that we see. So we run this, we can print out our zero division error and see that egg list is still none, interestingly, because this expression failed. So egg list is still none. It did not get reassigned here because it went into the exception block. So I'll run that one more time for you guys and see that our egg list is still none. So this in itself is a decent way to do exception handling with a list comprehension. This is the most basic way of creating a try except block and then if, uh, if your list comprehension does not succeed, if it fails at some point, then this in this except block, you can do whatever you want. So we could just 
uh, reassign our egg list to, to whatever we want to do. And when we run this, our egg list is now foo. So if it fails in the try, in the accept, uh, we can assign the egg list to something else. So that is a try accept lock, and that's a pretty decent way to handle a list comprehension from an error exception perspective. Next, I want to introduce the catch function that we have created, or that I pretty much pulled from this Stack Overflow answer. So this is our catch function, and you'll notice that once again, it's a try accept lock. And in the try, uh, we attempt to run the function, and in the accept, we're going to handle the error. So I'm going to remove our old egg list and uncomment our new one. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. We're still doing one divided by egg uh, for egg in eggs, except we just have this catch function with a lambda going on. So I can run this again. And the output is pretty interesting. So we can see that the numbers which were successfully divided by one um, successfully did so and entered the list. And then the error we actually got the whole error in the list. And again, so our numbers were 1, 5, 0, 5, 2. So uh, we basically had 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2, error, 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. Um, so we'll run that one more time just to get the feel for it and see that we have the full exception in our list. Now, the reason that's happening is because in our function, you can see that we're using this handle default function. And it really doesn't do anything with the error. So we have the exception as E. And then here with the E, we're pretty much just returning the E. And we can switch that up if we want to. There, we have tons of options available to us. And let's say we, um, we return none. So when we go down to run this, uh, we're going to get none instead of that full exception that you saw before because I chose to do none. And we can return that to E just so you guys can see that again and see uh, we got our full exception here and then uh, compared to previously having returned none. So there's different ways that you can handle your exceptions based on um, you know, what your program is expecting, what output you're expecting, um, what your preference is for handling errors in general. So just know that the general idea is that you should create a function and then inside that function, uh, those errors, you can kind of handle them how you see fit. We could even just, you know, write the word error. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not saying this is the best way to do it, but you could, just so you can kind of visually see it again, that when you have an error um, in one specific iteration, you can address the error in that specific iteration without, um, without pausing or breaking the whole loop. So you might be wondering, well, why do we even have this try accept block since we have one in the function? And that's a good point. We can simply remove this right now and we wouldn't even need to necessarily initiate as none either because our catch function is going to do all of the work for us. So we can run this. Um, we get our error that uh, I showed you guys before. We can put this back to E and we can run this again and we can see we get our zero division error. Now lastly, let me show you guys one more potential exception, um, the one from our terminal example just so you can see it with a different one and you can see that in this case we're going to get it for all five instead of just one because we're trying to divide all five of the numbers in this tuple by z and since z has not been initiated uh, we're getting that name error five times so again uh, we can return this to egg and we'll just get the one error um, if we change this to zero, um, we're going to get five errors again, but five zero division errors. And then if we just change this to, you know, random variable, 
um, when we go to run our random variable, we're going to get the five name errors. So just wanted to show you that it wasn't a zero division error thing. It wasn't a name error thing. Um, whatever error you're going to get, that is what's going to happen. So bring this back to our original example. In this case, again, um, showing the whole error. Personally, I think none might be a better option for some people or just something that's not the whole error because you can't really do anything with that. But if you then had the egg list and then you said, you know, if not none, then you can do some work knowing that there's um, and you know, there's nuns coming down the list <laughs> anyway. So I hopefully this was a decent primer for you guys on what you can do with list comprehensions. So just to conclude in this video, we learned that list comprehensions are expressions and expressions cannot have same line error handling. Only statements can. And I know that's a little wishy-washy. Okay. Expression statement, whatever, but What's important is just that with any kind of list comprehension, you're not going to be able to fully handle those exceptions just on one line unless you use a function. So in this video, we looked at two different ways to do it. We looked at try except blocks, or we looked at creating custom functions. And here, this catch function, this is just one example of a function that you can use. I'm sure many people have different uh, variations of this but I think using a custom function for catching errors in a list comprehension is a great way to go and a tool that is underutilized. So there you have it, exception handling in list comprehensions. Thanks for watching.